years ago Brad in the media team at Fox asked me to do a vlog and it's taken a little while but here we are this is the start of my vlog which I'm gonna name carp fishing fox and me because that is essentially what this is all gonna be about I'm gonna go do a bit of carp fishing it's gonna be me and my life at home and with Fox so don't expect a really big epic production. Please don't expect that because this is literally going to be me, my GoPro and my phone. And it's just going to be a real life quick cut and edit of yeah, what I get up to month to month. So without further ado, loads has been going on in the last month. So I'll take you back to the start. So this is the start, I guess, and I have come with Alice, who I don't know where she is at the moment, to Ikettleby Lakes, and it's mainly a little bit of a holiday, but basically we have rented out this rather nice glamping pod, although it's hardly even, gla like you can't even call this glamping, this is like a hotel room, but just, made out of wood in the great outdoors but the most important thing is we've got some fishing lakes just over the back and at some point we're gonna have a little dabble on the fishing lakes not gonna do too much fishing but one thing that i do want to do is help alice catch her first ever carp so let's see how it goes so i'm just about to start fishing this is the first evening I wasn't actually gonna fish this evening we were just gonna sort of get our pod together and and sort of have a bit of a walk around get our bearings Alice after a bit of a walk around has said no Harry have a go for an hour or so so obviously a bit of handoff um, I've got my very ancient 13 foot match rod this is about 18 years old I've had it for ages uh, I've had that reel for a less amount of time 3,000 size reel got a grain of corn and I've got a pole float i don't know if you can see up there so i'm only going to be fishing the length of my rod out i think there are quite a few roach because every time the float cocks it almost straight away goes under and with that hair rig bit of corn it doesn't really hook them very well oh hook that one <laughs> Yay. oh yeah well That'll do, but it's not a carp. I have finally hooked one. Basically, my kit is all wrong. I, I missed so many bites off the surface from these carp. Um, so tomorrow's a, a, a sort of get my act together. Today was just a little practice and Alice is gonna catch a few. Aren't you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah! <laughs> oh, that was a long time coming. There is the first carp from me ever from iKettleby. And yeah, hopefully, we're just going to have lots and lots of fun here on our little stay and uh, now this is going to go back we're going to go back watch an episode of Love Island and then maybe to the bar awesome so day two and we're a little bit more prepared and it's going to happen basically I brought the floater bag as you can see we've got six mil floaters in I've also got my 11 millers as well in that bag got my floater rod there I've actually bought loads more gear um, but my floater rod is ready and the fish are too okay so that is what I'm going to be using I basically just whipped on a bait band into the hair so it's like literally whipped in the sort of frongs of the knotless knot 
not sure how easy that is for you to see but that is it no float no nothing the fish are absolutely loving it out there and at the moment there isn't any more floaters out there and i reckon if i just put that one out there they're gonna have it let's go There you go, <laughs> a lot smaller than yesterday's, but lovely little fish, nailed, absolutely nailed. Yep. This is actually the first time that I've been floater fishing this year and it is loads of fun that these aren't big fish and I didn't come here to catch big fish I just came here for a nice holiday with Alice and that's that is what I'm having oh well, that's a better one there we go just got a barbless size 10 zig and floater hook on yeah, I'd give myself five pounds for that. Bye bye. This is ridiculous. I haven't fished for about probably half an hour now, just trying to get their confidence up. Just feeding them more and more, just little and often, like only a little pouch full of maybe 10 little six mil pellets. And um, yeah, they are mullering them. Come on, Al. Where are you? About, yeah. yeah, like that. Mm. That was a little bit short. Is that right? Maybe just try again. Okay. I think what you need to do is just have a little bit of a shorter drop when you cast out. So you wind it up. There. Stop. Right. So, yeah. Like that. Yeah. Put but your your other finger. That's it. Like that? Yeah. Is everything right? Yeah. Like that? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, too tense. Okay, good. Now what? Put that thing down. Put that thing down, yeah. And just bring it in a bit closer. Right, can you... Oh, stop, stop there, stop there. Is that thing down? I think it took it. It tried to, but it didn't quite. Remember, keep the rod tip down and make sure you don't, you take up the slack. <laughs> right, can you see it? It's, oh, that was right on it. I can't really see Go, strike. <sighs> oh, now what? <laughs> you missed it. Right, we'll put a new pellet on. Yeah, go now. That's it. Right, bell arm over. That's it. Right, and can you see the thing? No. Yeah, it's on the end. Is that thing bobbing on the oh, end? Yeah, I could get it. Okay, put your rod tip down and wind in a little bit of slack. Put the rod tip down like that. Okay, that's it, that's it. That's enough. Yes, yes! <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> what do I do? Right, don't hold the rod quite so high. Yeah, but it's going to get off, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, keep a bend in the rod, but obviously if he wants to come to you, wind him in, and if he doesn't, don't. Okay. So you can wind a bit at the moment. 
What Sorry, forwards? Can't. Forwards? You're trying to wind backwards. Sorry. <laughs> okay, come on, keep going. Keep keep the bend in the rod. That's what you need to do. That was a really good strike. Oh, he's good. fighting me. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He is fighting you. <laughs> That's one of the bigger ones that was out there as well. That's it. Just keep that bend in the rod. Got a sweat on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd just with this hand, yeah, keep it held up there. I know, but I don't know. Yeah, if you need to put it into your hip, then do, although that is your poorly hip, My isn't it? Poorly hip. <laughs> That's it. You're doing well. And by, um, when he comes up, I just want you to walk back, and I'll try and net him. Okay, just walk backwards. Walk backwards. Keep going. <laughs> That's it, go on. Pull him back, pull him back, pull him back. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> well done! <laughs> well done, how good was that? I I have to say that I did that by myself. <laughs> you did do that by yourself. I'm very happy with that. Did you think you weren't going to do it by yourself? The, doing that, <laughs> I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to. But then I did. So, well done. Professional. And Sherman, that's bigger than what I caught yesterday and bigger than any of the ones I caught today. Right, I want my photo with it now. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well done. Alright, that's it. So make sure it's under that peck. There it is. Your first ever carp. Well done, Al. How would you feel? Proud. Proud. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think it looks nice. Yeah, you're looking at it in a carpy way. That was good. Yeah, I tried. Oh, wow. Everything's going to be quite wet. Is that not your one? Oh, oh that one. <laughs> Close. Go on. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I like fishing here. That's it. Oh, that's a pretty one. Yeah. <laughs> that's a mirror, everybody. Yes. That's a mirror. <laughs> it's not as flappy as the last one. I want to say something carpy, like, oh. It's not as flappy, it isn't particularly <laughs> carpy. I don't know. I think it's more about the way that you look at it and go, yeah. So, <laughs> dorsal fins. Do dorsal fins. That's something <laughs> people talk about. <laughs> right, so we call this a scaly banger in our end. We know it as the nice orange spot uh, <laughs> mirror. Yeah, beauty, absolute beauty. Um, so yeah, feeling great, feeling proud. Fantastic uh, outcome <laughs> had by all. Um, yeah, the orange spot scaly banger. <laughs> what a beauty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the stance of a fisher lady. <laughs> Not the most attractive. <laughs> yeah! Hooray. That one is a very shiny one. Shiny one. A shiny banger.
Yes. <laughs> there we go. Alice is smashing it. So Alice is just editing her photos of the fish to put on her Instagram. If you want to follow her, at Alice LF. No, on Insta, not, is it not? not? <laughs> what is it? Alice Lee Fox. Alice Lee Fox. It's Alice LF on Facebook, but don't go to her Facebook, <laughs> go to Instagram. Alice Lee Fox. She wants as many followers as no, possible to bombard her. <laughs> <laughs> so that is most of the gear in the van. Just got the mat and uh, net to hang up. I think she was proper buzzing with that and I was well buzzing to see her catch those fish and, and, and do it sort of as, as well as she did. You know, she's only been fishing a, a few times, been chub fishing, been pike fishing. Um, and yeah, her casting's coming along awesome. And yeah, to get to see her sort of watching the fish come up, take the, take the hook bait and then strike, set the hook and do it as well as I was doing it. Um, yeah, was really, really cool. So just gonna spend the rest of the afternoon chilling probably in the pod, might go for a walk. I've got a pub booked later on today. Just gonna have a bit of a chilled rest of the day. So we've just been grab some fresh cold bevies. Check these guys out. Got a wicked little koi pond. Look at a big koi pond with quite big koi actually. These are most of these are bigger than what we've actually been catching. <laughs> Have you been feeding them? Yes. Are they feeding? Luring them in, yes. There's two that have taken the the feed. The yeah, bait. The pellets, the yeah. Pellets. So I threw out. Good. Yeah, look, look we can see are. them out there. Now there's four. Now, there so this is actually lake four. We've been on lake five. Is it, no, I was there, saying there was four fish. Yeah, but this is lake four. Oh, four fish on lake four. Yeah. <laughs> let's go. Let's, let's do it. I yeah, wonder, let's do it. Oh my God, there's five. Let's see if these are, these are bigger ones or not. Let's go. Right. Your turn. Oh. I think part of it is also every time I miss it, I scream <laughs> and they flap away. Yeah, yeah, well done. Oh my was, gosh, was, that was that stressful? Was that stressful? Yeah. Right. It's the squinting that's that's really tiring actually. Right, keep the oh, rod up. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> yeah. It's Alice's new PB, eight pounder. <laughs> straight away <laughs> yeah well just got a little bit caught out in the rain got absolutely soaked but it's actually still quite warm so um it's sort of that nice <laughs> midsummer rain where you can get absolutely soaked through and not feel cold or anything but that sort of signaled an end to our little evening session and now we're going to get a takeaway there are four takeaway places that you get from Melton Mowbray that actually deliver straight to your pod here so that's going to be a bit of an edge call up they can deliver us um, I think we're gonna go for a bit of an Indian tonight and uh, yeah enjoy sitting in the pod whilst the rain beats down yeah lovely times Get off me, get off me. But oh, my cat's attached to me. Right, so today is gonna be a very, very busy day. I'm back at home 
and um, yeah, I'm gonna be on the laptop pretty much all day, which is most of my days actually worth of work. A lot of people will think that, oh, you just get to go fishing all the time, but no, um, probably four days out of five, I'm actually at home working on the laptop, and then the other day I'll probably be in the office. And today I am gonna be working through and making sure that everything is prepped and ready for our launch that is in three days time. This is our pre-sales launch, our biggest launch of the year. Um, we don't have any more launches after this point. So basically we are now announcing loads of products that are gonna be coming over the next month, two months, three months, sort of leading up to Christmas. Um, we've got absolutely bundles of products coming in. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing today. I've got my two cats helping me. This is Callie, this is Dina. They will very soon be shut away because they will annoy me like nobody's business. This isn't just what I'm doing today, this is what I'm starting off with. And basically, this is what I sent to Peter, um, who is our website content uh, coordinator. And basically we've got links to all of the products there, the languages that um, they all need to be in, and then what the products are here. And then we've got a notes column here. And basically I've, I've given Peter all of the content. However, um, he's just noted a few things in, in the uh, notes sort of column. Um, he's got no access to some text. So the links are like bugging out on the on the text for some reason. So I've got to fix those links. I've got to re-upload the text. And that is my first job for the day. But there's going to be lots more. I've got to, um, I've got to schedule up some videos. Um, I've got to make sure that all of our posts that are sort of going out over the next couple of weeks are scheduled, make sure our syndicate members' newsletters are scheduled. So there's absolutely loads and loads for me to do today because I need to get it all done today because tomorrow I'm going on another uh, sort of mini break. It's the last opportunity to um, have a holiday with Alice before she goes back to work. She works as a teacher, so obviously she's got the summer holidays off. So I've got a few more days off with Alice and then it's back to the grindstone. But today is gonna be a long one. It is quarter past eight now, and I don't imagine I'll be finished till eight or nine o'clock tonight. Let's get going. It's now just gone 10 past eight and I'm pretty much wrapped up for the day. I've got one more little video to film that I'm gonna film after I've had some dinner. Um, there's just a little Facebook video. But yeah, I've um, sort of checked and double checked all of our posts for social media and made sure that everything's sort of scheduled up at the right times for our launch that's happening in a couple of days time. And um, yeah, I've got to say a massive thank you to yeah the sort of team around me. Like I don't do everything and it, I'm, like, I just sort of try and make sure that the pieces all fit together. And yeah, the, the, the guys uh, have done a wicked job. Like um, John Sisson's taking the, taking the photos, doing some design work as well, editing all the photos, uh, the studio work. Like he's done absolute sterling work. So many products he's had to turn around in quite a short space of time. Um, Brad has done all of our on the on the bank photography, along with um, a couple of the product videos. Moz has been smashing out some product videos for us as well. Um, plus, um, our, our guys sort of across Europe and doing bits as well. Our consultants have been sort of modeling the products on the bank, etc. Scott for getting all the product text over to me to then um, edit edit up and put into um, into something that we can put on our website and on social media. Um, Millie, who's absolutely um, smashed over, I think, 580 posts across Instagram, across Facebook, um, and 11 different languages. She's absolutely nailed that. And Peter um, on the website, I mentioned Peter earlier. Um, yeah, he's had to um, upload all of these products as well. There are over 30 products that Fox are launching and he's got to do it for our other sister brands as, as well. So yeah, our team have done a sterling job and of course, product development. I mean, who can get those, all of those things wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for um, Scott, Sean and Andy in, in product development. So it's a massive, massive launch and 
I think you guys are going to be really excited about some of the products. You'll have seen them by now, so I can talk about them. Um, Horizon X5S and the the 12,000 XC, like they're the standout ones, the 12,000 XC, the best reel that we've we've made by a long shot. Um, I got the chance to use them the other day and they are absolutely stunning in looks and in performance as well. Really lightweight, so, so smooth and you, you can just use them all day long. So yeah, like props to the, the team at Fox because Actually, you might think that we've got a, a huge, huge team, but in reality, we don't. Compared to a, a lot of other companies, it's a small team, but we've got like the best people in the in the business, and uh, and I absolutely believe that in terms of product development and stuff, the amount of product, top quality product that these guys bring out is is ridiculous. So. Yeah, props to them. And I am going to go and get myself um, some dinner, do that last video and, um, and sign off for the, for the day because I am pretty exhausted. So I realised that when I was doing that last video, um, doing lots of shout outs, um, there was a few people that I actually missed off that really do deserve a shout out. And they're, they are the sort of unsung heroes um, at Fox and they and they never get any sort of recognition to the to the wider general public and I, and I feel like it's it's sort of right for me to um, thank them on on this just for the work that they put in and that's in the the design team not just the graphic design team but also the product design team um, so these are the guys that um, or the product design team are the guys who we give them ideas and the, the development team give them ideas and these are the guys that draw them up and make them come to life and uh, and do all the problem solving to get around various things and, and and make sure that we're bringing out top quality products so adam mark collins campbell kyle and tom who have absolutely smashed it yet again like year on year these guys bring out so many products it is a joke and and really really do work hard um equally john and steve in the graphic design team doing the packaging doing the flyers um they they do a lot of the stuff for the sort of shops as well um and danny who designs all of our clothing and also does packaging design as well. Our clothing, I believe, is is the best and it is the most popular out there on the market. Um, so yeah, Dan, good job for that. And, and all of the guys, um, yeah. We have an awesome team at Fox. Very, very blessed to have an awesome team. And yeah, I believe it is the best in the business. Right, is it just me? Or does anybody else just randomly go to um, their fishing kit to smell their pop-ups? I don't know if that's just me. Let me know if you also just go randomly to smell your pop-ups. But that's exactly what I'm doing now. Um, as you can see, I have got too many pop-ups. The like, I only keep like four or five pots in my bag, but this is like my amount of pop-ups who else has a ridiculous collection of them but my key ones that i'm going to be smelling are these that i've actually i've, I've got these the other week um so i've got some basically match the hatch pop-ups and wafters and i glugged them up the other day so i've got live system and pacific tuna ones and with the live system oh they that that was nice and wet they've um soaked that up really really well and yes i can confirm they smell amazing so what i've glugged that up with is the live system booster liquid and if i can find it yeah um the amino blend 365 so just a little dribble of both both basically and um that sort of creates quite a nice creamy glug i'll see if i can shake it up and see if there's any more left yeah so you can see in there sort of a nice creamy coating and then the pacific tuna pop-ups and wafters um have had 
small glug of a tuna bait booster. For me, I always want my hook bait just to stand out a little bit more. So yeah, pop-up smelling. Who else does it? We have found a swim, or well Mark has found a swim, mainly with my help actually. Um, this is the sort of stuff that you don't get to see on the challenge. <laughs> Mark's really well prepared, re-spooling his reel up, his spod reel, with what looks like some spom, some yep. spom braid. Spom braid, yeah. Spom braid. Uh, his kit is covered in his old, that's actually some prototype braid that he's been using for years now. Are you feeling confident, Mark? I am actually, yeah. He is feeling confident. Good news, good news. This is what it's like at two o'clock in the morning on a challenge. Not normally like this at two o'clock in the morning on the challenge, though, is it? No, normally you're like wound in, not fishing at night. <laughs> Sod this. I'm a terrible night fisherman. But yeah, Mark has look well don't look in that net I, I it looked as if i was showing you in that there net there's obviously nothing in that net but there's only one rod on the alarm there's all sorts of trails of water there's a wet mat and sling so yeah it's been eventful so far and we're only well, we're not very far into the challenge at all. No, actual fishing time into the challenge has been five hours. <laughs> yeah, not long. So back in the day, we used to sort of rely on basically the angler shouting when you were asleep to wake up to come and film it. I don't like like sacking fish throughout the night. I always want to film them and um and get them back i think that that's the most real way of doing it nowadays with the old rx plus because you can tune as many heads uh into an rx plus as what you want and you can um tune uh, a set of alarms into as many different heads as you want i take my receiver with me and then i tune it into whoever's alarm so i've got got it tuned into mark's alarm so i'm in the swim next door giving him plenty of space and and making sure that none of my clobbers actually in the way for the filming yeah it just means that when he gets a bite i know about it and then i'm up i cover up all my uh my kit but it's there all ready to go so i literally just have to switch the uh the batteries on the mic packs on mic him up switch the light on get the camera on and go yeah it's all covered the way under the uh my, well under my camo jacket i always take that with me and most of the time it ends up just ca covering my uh my kit to make sure it's all good yeah man this is mark's first day bite well done mark thank you the smallest one so far how's it going so far it's going really really good really good way better than either of us expected i've got to say he has outdone himself so far on this challenge with his display of angling really? i've actually been slightly impressed <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah Me too i've impressed myself as well oh well done <laughs> well done yeah so you can see we managed to get the bite on camera as well had the gopro going on the on the rods and in that net is it might be a 20 pounder i'd it's say up around that weight isn't it yeah it's definitely yeah it's, it's touching 20 i think yeah doesn't matter does it doesn't matter no it's good skills it is a lovely afternoon here at wireside stunning fishery i've yeah like i said before i think i've been here once before i've never been round this lake at all this is sunny one and it's going rather well how's about that mark that is a banger that is an old banger an I old banger we've had a few old bangers yeah. on this trip or you have anyway <laughs> yeah 
But right. yeah, just under 20 pound that one. Of a gnarly old one. On morning, it is our last day of the shoot now. Um, so it's six o'clock in the morning. I've sort of just got, got up. I'm uh, doing a time lapse, got that going out there. Camera on a bucket, very, very technical. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's gone well. Last day of the shoot, like I said. Yeah, it's all about sort of put, putting the, the finishing touches on it so far. It's been, um, last night was actually quiet, but uh, you know, the first night it was, it was busy and didn't get a lot of sleep at all. And um, yeah, luckily tonight, or luckily for me anyway, tonight I've had a, had a decent kit because it's a four, four and a half hour journey home. And I think I'd have been nodding off this afternoon when we're on the road. But I think we've got we've we've got a good show in terms of in terms of content. But now it's about putting the finishing touches. You know, the challenge is about. We always try and make it funny. We always try and make it as enjoyable as possible. And actually, so far, we've caught quite a lot of fish, but we haven't actually had that time to sort of sit down and and chat and and you know we just chat and and funny things come out so we've got a few technical bits bits to film as well and um yeah hopefully it'll be a it'll, it'll be a, a good show I'm, I'm i'm looking forward to showing it this is the first time we've ever filmed in the in the northwest for a challenge um which is amazing considering how many challenges we've done and i'm looking forward to the edit it's breakfast time and up here at Wireside, they have a breakfast that they call the Growler. And I'm just about to get stuck in. Mark, you've already got stuck into I, your Growler. I, I had a mouthful of Growler this morning already, yeah. Yeah? I was straight on it. I couldn't wait. <laughs> you were a lot more patient than I was. <laughs> Lovely. No rods in the water, which is a good thing. Yeah, pretty good thing. It's yeah. a good thing, although I have encouraged you for the last hour to put the rods back out and you haven't managed it yet. I which is it, on my mind. People don't realise, but I often have to push Mark along with these things. Mark's not ever quite in as much of a rush as I am. But, growler for breakfast. And no one is complaining about that. Well, not long after a rechuck, he is bent in. And I'm gonna to have to go, because I've got to film it. We are more or less wrapped up. That's a wrap. That is a wrap. I think it's gone, it's gone, it's gone well. There's been, it's gone okay. there's been lots of um, action and Mark may or may not have passed the challenge, but either way, it should be uh, quite an entertaining one. Um, yeah, because lots and lots have gone on, so. Yeah, lots has happened this session, hasn't it? It has happened. We've we've enjoyed, we've both enjoyed a growler. And your first ever growler. My 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 first ever growler. Lost your growler yeah. cherry. And the first time that you've had a growler in twenty years. Yeah. So <laughs> it's been really really good. I'd like to thank uh, Wireside and uh, especially Callum. Um, at Wireside for uh, yeah hosting us and um, and putting on a uh, a good little trip for us and uh, and of course thank you to all of the other anglers that have been here that have somewhat helped mark mm, out you could say that yeah somewhat <laughs> I've realised I start all of these little intro bits or little segments with right or so so I just made sure that I didn't start this bit with right or so. And if I do again throughout the rest of this vlog, feel free to troll me as much as you like. So, <laughs> I, can't, I literally can't do it without saying so. I have been on a really cool overnight session last night with my good friend and old fishing partner, Alexi Bygrave. Now, we haven't fished together actually for probably the last five years because 
he is now living in America. We used to fish all the time together. We used to do the competitions together, did the world champs um, with Team England together. But yeah, we don't get to fish anymore. And he came over to the UK for the first time in forever and we managed to get a night in. I didn't vlog simply because where we went, I have been absolutely sworn to secrecy about, but we had a really, really good time, caught some lovely fish. I can't show you those, but promise you it did happen. But the main thing, main reason for sort of picking up the camera is as a result of meeting up with Alexi again, he had a bit of a confession to make to me that basically Alexi used to be on the Fox sponsored anglers scheme and um, he had ordered a five rod quiver for him to take his rods in to go to America. And what arrived just before he left was five, five rod quivers. And so he took his one and had four left over, but he forgot to mention that to me. Yeah, we've got four five rod quivers here from the FX range. So these are discontinued. You literally cannot get these anymore. The FX range was, um, you know, our flagship range of luggage. So it is really, really good stuff. And I'm gonna give some of them away. I'm basically gonna find a couple of young anglers who I think deserve to win some free stuff. So yeah, two of them will go to a couple of young anglers. If you wanna tag anyone, think if you've got someone who you think really, really deserves this, put their Instagram name in below. If they've got a YouTube channel, put their YouTube channel name in below and I will get in contact. I'll search through and pick a couple of people who I think really, really deserve this. And then the other two I'm gonna give away as a competition prize. So to enter the competition, all you have to do is answer this question in the comments below. What was the name of the venue that Alice and I visited earlier on in this vlog? Get it in the comments below. I will only pick a winner out of people who are subscribed to the Fox YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe as well and I will pick a winner probably in the next vlog. So the next vlog, I will announce the winner of these prizes. Okay, so we are a week further on from where I last saw you. And now in between my work, I am gonna sort out a bit of bait because tomorrow I'm going to Grenville. It's actually the first time I've been to Grenville this year, which is an absolute sin, because how can I be missing out on that amazing fishing that is there? But I have done, and basically tomorrow's a bit of a getting back into it trip before I'm filming uh, next week with CC Moore. So I'm just pre prepping up a bit of bait, and it's boily only there. So what I'm gonna do is basically, over the last, I don't know, month or so in my fishing that I've been doing on my uh, no publicity venue, um, I've been mixing live system and tuna and it's been working really, really well for me. So I don't see why I need to change that for Grenville. What I want to do for there, just because they see a lot of boilies, is I just want to wash them out a little bit. I've got um, 10s and 15s there, straight out the freezer. So I'm washing them out for two reasons, really. One is because they sort of arouse a bit less suspicion when, when the fish arrive over a bed of bait that isn't sort of freshly put down or it doesn't appear to be freshly put in. They've taken on a lot, a lot more water. They're sort of swollen and soft and they're much more easy to digest. I think the fish feed over that bait a lot more confidently. And where we're fishing somewhere that is boily only and sees a lot, a lot of boilies, I think it just makes sense to try and make it seem like your bait's been there for a while. The other thing is if I'm fishing at range with the boilies, if they have taken on quite a lot of water, they're gonna be heavier and they'll go out easier in the spot. Because I haven't got any lake water, I've got bottled water. Now I don't know if it makes a difference between um, tap water and, uh, and yes, yeah, spring water. The water in Cambridge is so full of limescale that I just don't trust it. 
and you know, it's the sake of um, a, a, a quid for, a, for four or five litres of water. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a big bottle of that in with the boilies. And then I'm just gonna add a glug that's Marine Amino 365. I do like to add a liquid with the boilies when I'm washing them out, even though that kind of goes against the idea of washing the baits out because you're actually adding to it. But I still feel when it's actually when it's out there on the lake bed, it appears to be like it's been in there for a while because it's soft, because it's wa washed out in colour, but it's actually pumping out loads of flavor and attraction where in Grenville, you've got really deep water. I think that's really beneficial. So I'm gonna crack this open. Oh, it does smell good. And just give a generous helping of that. Now I haven't actually brought my uh, spoon with me. That's in the shed. So I'll do that in a bit. I did forget to mention as well, I will be adding um, a small amount of trout and halibut pellet oil to the boilies as well. And that's simply so that they can soak that up and then sort of give the, um, the whole water column a, an element of attraction. Obviously halibut pellet oil is less dense than water, so it will rise up. So as the boilies like, leak off, the, the oil, it'll send send those sort of food signals up through the water and hopefully the fish will home in on them. Also, it gives you a great indication of whether fish are actually feeding on your, on your swim. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna give them a big mix round and wait until tomorrow. I'm proper pumped for, uh, for getting back down to Grenville. It has been too long. Here I am and I have got the rods out. Yeah, so they've all gone out nice. I have seen, well, a few fish out here, but I've seen fish everywhere. And, um, and a few people have caught around the lake, but they've all sort of been a bit spread out. So there's nothing really concentrated. I feel like the rods have got out nice and I have got a chance. So yeah, this is my, this is my home. I'm in the frontier. I've had the uh, the laptop on, been tapping away, sorting out a few bits. As you can see, loads of room in the old frontier. This is just a standard size. It's always a proper buzz to be on the bank here, just because when you get a bite, it could be ten pound and it could be a mid to upper sixty. So who knows, let's, uh, let's give it a go. I've got the night tonight, I've got into tomorrow, so there's a chance. And if one of those rattles off, I will be very excited. So this is my little setup while I was working on the bank, doing a few emails and that. So I've got my laptop here and I've got the 96K power pack and I've just got a little inverter there that I've plugged me uh, plug into now obviously these days when you get if you've got like a mac or something you get the uh thunderbolt uh connectors or i don't even know what they're called but um basically you don't need one of those with like the newer ones because you can go straight into the uh type c that's there but if you've only got a laptop that works off of a uh, a sort of normal plug just get one of these inverters you can get them for about 15 20 quid off of uh, amazon does the job absolutely sound it is an absolutely gorgeous morning here at grenville look at that glorious however they have been yeah motionless to say the least and i mean i kind of i kind of just think that I've, I've got it wrong in the sense of my location and that is that is the way on here you know i i think maybe some people think that it's just a case of 
spot a load of bait out and because there's that many fish in here they'll just come but it, it's really really not like that you know it's 70 acres and the fish have got a lot of um a lot of space to sit in i haven't seen anything this morning although they do tend to show a little bit later in the morning than first light so it's first light now maybe they'll they'll start showing but yeah where i'm fishing which is into the deep water i did expect if i was gonna get a bite it would be in the hours of darkness and that hasn't happened and that is the way that it goes on here i'm just gonna hope that this doesn't happen next week when i'm filming because that will be uh yeah very disappointing if i can't produce for the cameras but I mean, really, who cares when you're out on the bank and you wake up to that? That is what carp fishing is about. And one of them busting off, maybe. So I'm in the middle of the pack up and yeah, I made a big mistake coming in here. Should have listened to Paul, the owner um, he was saying they're not in the deep water yet don't go in the deep water and I sort of thought oh no I'm gonna I'm gonna go in there they've got to get in the deep water at some point and they haven't <sighs> made a mistake you win some you lose some hopefully next week I can write this very big wrong fingers crossed Oh, one thing I will show you that I have done. So obviously I showed you that I was washing out my baits before. And what I've done now is basically with a couple of bags of boilies that I had left, I didn't put all of my bait in. I basically topped these buckets up, added some of the lake water in. And so these are gonna go, um, gonna come back with me home now. And I'm gonna chuck them in the freezer yeah take them out i guess the day before so next monday ready for tuesday and they're all going to be washed out and um an absolutely pucker so yeah that's one thing if you are sort of if you're if you're doing a few sessions one after the other filling up your buckets with water and boilies chucking them in the freezer and then they will actually be washed out ready for you to go the following week I am back. Yeah, so it's a week later and I'm back to do my filming with CC Moore. Brad from CC Moore is coming down probably in a couple of hours and I've got down basically on when the gate opens at seven o'clock um, to have a bit of a look round. There's, I think, six on, which isn't many at all. There's another guy walking round. And yeah, I haven't seen anything so far. Oh God, last night I I was so excited. I woke up about two o'clock and just couldn't get back to sleep. And like, it's pretty cool that fishing still does that to me. I've, I've been fishing since I was four years old. So like, yeah, 27 years I've been fishing and it still makes me completely sleepless the night before. And even though it was a blank last week, you know this week it could be completely different so i'm gonna walk around stand in a few swims i'm probably gonna bypass this area that i'm walking past at the moment um but yeah stand in a few swims and see what's going on okay here we go boat loader kit all ready in my swim i am in swim 11. So yeah, peg 11. Brad has just taken his van off down there. He's got his kit here. You can probably hear it's pretty windy. And this is where we are going to be for at least 24 hours, if not a little bit longer. I've, they haven't been showing an awful lot at all. Um, this morning I've it's I've been here now there was one really close in okay that was good <laughs> yeah I can't believe it. I literally just seen one like 40 yards out okay awesome. um yeah I was gonna say they haven't been showing an awful lot and it's um it's been really hard to work out where to go but this sort of corner of the lake 
I mean, it's a 20 acre corner, but this is where I've seen the most. I've probably seen six shows in this area. I've seen two out in front of this peg, one to the right and two to the left. So, um, yeah, there's, uh, there's, there's certainly fish in the area at the moment and the wind is supposed to like hack down. So at the moment, as you can see, it's sort of coming in here but it's also coming in all the way along that bank but it's due to push into here tomorrow so yeah let's uh let's hope that i can produce something for the camera because yeah pressure is always on when the cameras are here last week when i blanked it didn't really matter but now i've got to produce something for cc more and i need to produce the goods really Yeah, so, I said that I'd got the swim, got the rods out, one's already missing. Got one in that net there, nothing massive, a common mid-double probably. And um, yeah, I spent, I don't know, two hours putting a bucket of bait out 120 yards to the corner of that island. A couple showed out here about 30, 40 yards, chucked two bags out, three bags out, sorry, and uh, yeah ripped off happy days so it's day two and i actually had another one last night um or yesterday afternoon um just a small one eight pound um one of the escapees from the stock ponds but i've had a bite at first light this morning got the camera set up on the rods brad's doing his bit well actually i think brad's hiding from the cold but we've got one in there which is very good and like i said this wind was always due to start cut cutting across here and it's doing so you can probably hear it all over the mic and i'll probably not even put this in because the wind will be so bad but i mean it's a beautiful day not necessarily brilliant fishing conditions bright blue skies but this wind should push a few more down here so there's gonna be chances biggest one so far morning bite and yeah 33 pounds very happy to get this one like there's always a little bit of pressure when you've got guys filming with you because they need the fish for the content to make sure people watch it and yeah i'm pretty pleased that the pressure is well and truly on and i can enjoy the session a little bit more awesome So check this out. This is an example of just what you've got to come up against. I don't know if you can see, so I should be fishing out to the corner of this island here and my rods are pointed over in that direction at the moment because the wind has picked them up. I say the wind, the wind has driven a load of weed across, floating weed, and that's picked up all three of my lines. They're all going into one big knot there. I'm pretty sure they should all be all right. Hopefully the stretch in the line means that the leads won't have moved. And if the leads do move, I should get a drop back. But yeah, it's, um, it's a little bit off putting. This wind, as you can see, is proper kicking up now. White caps all across the lake, all going into this corner. Well, one of the rods off of that spot, even though they're all matted together, has gone. And I'll show you that lovely scaly one. Yeah, so fourth fish so far. Yeah. It is proper pumping in. You're not gonna be able to hear me, is it? It is proper pumping in the um the wind now. Like I've just tried to top up and it was hard work. I swapped a mono from the braid to not get quite as much <coughs> bow in the line. But yeah, pr proper savage, really hard work. Oh look at this bloody pigeon roosted in this tree above me last night 
and has crapped all over my frontier which is great isn't it a little oh bastard anyway got the old andrex wipes out gonna clean it down i am so annoyed my lovely frontier covered in shit Well, that is about it from me on this session and for this month's vlog. Um, thank you ever so much for joining in and watching all the way to get till the end. You guys who have managed it till the end, good on you. Don't forget there's that competition to win those quiver holdalls in this vlog. And uh, yeah, leave me a comment. Let me know how you enjoyed it. If you want to ask any questions, again, put them in the comments and I'll, uh, I'll reply to all of the comments that have got questions in them. So yeah, until next month, where there is loads going on, I'm getting married next month. I've got a stag do and I'm getting married next month and I'm going to Poland. So there's loads going on in the next vlog. Check me out then.